What a nice little piggy. No! Bonjour, mon ami. It's me, Jimmy. Do you have an unusual craving for powerful women? Do you dream about some girl picking you up and throwing you like a sack of shit? Do you want some muscle mummy to absolutely destroy you? Guess what? I have a whole game about one of those chicks right here. But there's a problem. She's French and she's dead. And I don't know which is worse. Wars and Warriors, Joan of Arc. This game is about Joan of Arc going super saiyan and killing anyone who threatens French freedom, while dumpster diving for food in broken crates. An amazing prediction of what living in Paris will be like 600 years later. So, who made the game about French history and the Hundred Years War? Take a guess. It was a Hong Kong studio. Yes, you heard me right. Do they know anything about conflict or historical accuracy of that period? Yeah, sure buddy, absolutely. Okay, so what's the genre of the game? Zero fucking idea. You ask me. Why? Because it's an RPG, but it's also a hack and slash game. And you think I should stop here, but no. There is an FPS mechanic and an RTS mechanic. This bad girl can fit so many... Oh, oh, wait, no, I didn't mean it like that. And they developed this bad boy in one year. Three games in one year. They are the champions. They are the best. And light software? <laughs> More like... Actually, that's a pretty good name. But what's this? Other games developed by the same studio? Hey, yo, what's that one? Bad day, LA? No! Just like any other game that's older than the entirety of XQC's fanbase, we have two main problems to solve. Actually getting the game and forcing it to run in any size bigger than 720p. And I'm deeply sorry lads, today we are not going to the Seas of Freedom. You can buy the game on Steam. And just like with any other old game you never heard about, there's a solution for resolution. In the form of an insane slav maintaining the mode that allows you to run the game in 1080p. Was his profile picture? You already know the answer. It's anime waifu. It's always anime waifus. You can find him in Steam community guides and I will link his guide in a pinned comment. The game might start like this, but just hit the new campaign and it will run smoothly. But for the love of god, never open battle map in the menu unless you want to check if you still have epilepsy. Oh, and the textures of the game. Same modder upscaled and improved all of them. Spending 200 hours just to make a crusty old game look slightly better. Shout out to my boy Funny Sage, blessed be your autism. And I hope you will be reborn as an anime main character. Gameplay is an abomination of three games stitched together, so we will start with the first one you meet. As I said, the game tries to act like an RPG, so it has some item management and leveling, but who the hell cares, look at that. Oops, sorry, wrong footage. Look at that. This is a hack and slash game. You have combos, you have new skills, you can switch characters and you can commit war crimes. This is truly a French dynasty warriors. See those 20 Englishmen running towards you? You aren't locked in here with them, they are locked in here with you. The most dangerous villain on the planet. A woman hearing voices. There's no one in England who can kill you. You just press left mouse button twice and right mouse button once and send everyone flying. At the end of each mission you will score close to 500 kills on Joan alone. This is 500 young boys in England, saved from being beaten up by their father after he comes back from the tavern. If you ask me, Joan is a child protection activist. This part of the game is super solid. I love it. It wakes up something primal in me in the same way Doom does. Not the new one they ruined by listening to tryhards. The other one. But what's that? A stupid archer trying to snipe you? Pull out a gun and start playing the game like it's an FPS. Shoot the guy with an arrow or, if that's not enough, unlock historically accurate ability of Fireball. Big castle causing problems? No problem. Archers standing too close. Geneva Convention is yet to be invented. Close doors. FBI, open up! Absolutely unhinged mode. Zero tolerance for any human rights. War crimes beyond human comprehension. If I didn't know already, I would have thought the game is made by Canadians. And after you have played two games already, the game says here's the biggest map in the campaign, capture everything, good luck. What do you do? A. Carefully capture everything while playing in RPG mode. B. Give up. Or C. Start playing an entirely different game. But of course, the answer is C. Here, press F2. Bam! New game. It's now an RTS. You are not a soldier any longer. You are a god. Those soldiers you see? Just a resource. No names, no family. A copy of a copy. Piece of meat to throw into the grinder of war for your victory. 
it's safe to assume that from now on you are the voice drawn is hearing. Not a voice of God, but a voice of a nostalgic fat guy, halfway hidden under the desk. And this voice only wants two things, some pizza and more dead English. I hope now you see what I'm talking about. This is three games for the price of one, and you can switch between them whenever you like. But beware, this game has left a void in me. I was unable to find another game like that. A game that has two or three unnecessary mechanics that no one asked for, but developers made them anyway just for the fun of it. As for the art direction, I can tell you one thing. A good Grafusi is nowhere to be found. It's an average coochie all around. Yes, it was made in a year by what I can only assume is a bunch of people who have never been in Europe, but it looks okay for something developed that fast. And honestly, seeing what types of games are developing a year now, I can guarantee you it's one of the best looking games in the market for games made in one year. But if you are someone who cares for historical accuracy, it might not be a game for C. Just look at this historically accurate sword. Yeah, Scala Grimm won't approve of that one. Also, water is very realistic. You can almost taste its moist on your lips. It's called touch that leaves you wet. <sighs> Sorry, where were we? Oh right, cons. There's only one, but oh boy, it's big and juicy. Pathfinding. Before we proceed, let's do a quick learning session. Pathfinding is a system in video games that makes all NPCs able to go from point A to point B through the most fastest and effective route while avoiding obstacles such as other NPCs, walls, terrain, closed doors and pretty much any other physical object in the game. It's a very old problem in RTS and games in general that's very hard to solve, because without good pathfinding, you will be micromanaging your troops instead of playing the game. This problem was present in RTS games ever since this genre of games was created. Here's a video from Ars Technica, where developers of CNC Tiberian Sun talk about it. It's a good watch, I recommend you check it out. So now we know that if you have bad pathfinding in RTS, you have a bad RTS. Now you will ask me, Jimmy, is pathfinding in this game any good? And I'm someone who likes to show don't tell, so just watch. I hate it. Soldiers will get stuck in absolutely everything. Hell, they even manage to get stuck running into each other. And artillery, the thing you need to siege castles, feels like a torture device created to make westerners playing the game suffer. I swear to you, out of 18 hours it took me to beat the game, one of them was me screaming at my monitor because cannon got stuck in the tree again. Soldiers went to a small, narrow, tight hole. They are now just lost forever. It's fun on open areas, but the moment you get inside any castle or city, you better off switching to RPG mode. But thankfully, that's it, everything else is fine. I am now going to talk about the story of the game, like no one ever heard of John of Arc. There's no point in sticking around for this part unless you failed all of your history classes. If you want to avoid spoilers, go to here. Hello, my American part of the audience. Look at this map. This is a land of obesity and being bad at geography. And we are talking about this region. If you don't know where it is, ask your racist classmate who plays Hearts of Iron 4. He knows a lot about this part of the world. Joan was born to a family of farmers during a Hundred Years' War between France and England, which lasted, you guessed it, 116 years. At the Epstein ripe age of 17, Joan established a connection with God, who told her to save France by coronating Charles VII as the new king. Unlike me, who never listens to voices inside of his head, she took this mission very seriously and demanded an audience with the future king, claiming she's a messiah. As you can guess, schizophrenia was not yet discovered, so she, of course, got an audience with Charles, who, upon seeing an unhinged woman hearing voices, did the only thing he could, gave her an armor and sent her to the besieged Orleans as a part of relief army, in hopes she dies there, so he don't get ordered around by a penis like an individual. Surprisingly, nine days after she arrived, the English abandoned the siege. Joan said left hook at the ball and steamrolled English all the way up to Reims, where Charles was crowned as the rightful king of France. Joan, thinking she can score an ace, continued on to the siege of Paris, where she fumbled the bag and eventually got captured by the English. In captivity she was trialed by the church in what will be remembered as a reverse OJ Simpson trial. 
the church found her guilty of literally every crime possible without any proper evidence and burned her at the stake when she was only 19. Church later figured out that maybe having a trial conducted by only English sympathizing members of the church is not a good look and a big blow to the reputation of high-ranking child predators, so they overturned the verdict. John was pronounced a saint by the Roman Catholic Church and later declared as one of the patron saints of France. And that was it. Your history lesson is over, please look at the map again and stop embarrassing yourself every time someone asks you to name 5 countries in Europe. Now, how does the game compare to the actual story of Joan? Game is 8 missions long, following her only to the coronation of Charles. Siege of Paris and her death are completely ignored. So, there's a fanfiction ending of the game that's as truthful as me telling you I'm a native English speaker. There was an attempt to add briefing for each mission, but just listen to it. I did not mess with it in editing. It would have been very helpful, but the music is loud and at rare times when you can hear the voiceover, you can feel the guy is just trying to speedrun getting paid and bailing out of the record booth. So he is no help, we will figure it out on the go. At mission 1 you are on the road to Orleans with John de Metz, your first companion. This is a tutorial mission, you learn to fight, navigate the map, use your inventory and so on. In the middle of a mission, you find two French soldiers carrying a letter from Duke of Alencon. The letter is literally saying, running late to save Orleans, start the party without me, hope you survive. And once you arrive to Orleans, the mission is finished, good job, 7 more to go. Mission 2 is called Imperial Counterattack. Here you meet this bastard of Orleans, the most square-faced person in all of France. He tells you exactly nothing, instead spending all of his time smashing chicks with the Mets, while you go shopping for new armor and French baguette. Once you're done with it, the English attack. You beat them up and force the general to retreat. Retake a few towns and eavesdrop on some soldiers discussing that very soon Orleans will fail due to the secret weapon at the disposal of English. This weapon is three cannons and a brother of the general. They get the ass beat immediately and this is the end of mission 2. Mission 3 is named Assault at Twilight. No, not that one. You move deeper into the English territory, to gain foothold in the region and to protect Orleans from possible counterattacks. In the middle of the mission, you will meet with Lahire, a new member of your team. And I swear to god, developers didn't even bother checking how he looks. This is his portrait, and here he is in the game. A perfect match. You beat every single camp, defeat few more generals along the way and move on to the next mission. Mission 4, Victory at Torals, starts with you meeting Duke of Alencon, the guy who completely ignored the group assignment of protecting Orleans. And he promises to help you capture your first castle in the region, with the help of his secret French weapon. This time it's four cannons. The Metz says he will meet with the siege forces that will help you with storming the castle. But this little cuck gets captured literally two minutes into the mission and you have to bail him out. The only member of your team who isn't useless is Lahire. He is just happy to be here. If you stand around even for 5 seconds, he starts screaming and demanding you let him fight more English. He's my favorite. After you meet with the Lord of Historically Accurate Weapons, you seize means of captivity, release the Mets, meet with Alencon, firebomb the Arbalist Tower, capture the city and show once again who's girl boss here to this guy, who now ran away from you at least 3 times. This story was taken, you can go back to Orleans. Mission 5, Cleaning up the Lure, is the one where you are introduced to your worst enemy, Pathfinding. Now that you can switch between RTS mode and RPG gameplay, you have a giant map to capture. Which won't be that hard with the help of RTS mode. You save some generals along the way, kill like half the England and siege your first city. It's protected, once again, by general brothers. But this is actually a turning point in the story. Before that, when enemy generals were low on health, they would say I'll get you, bitch! and run away. But Joan is tired of that now, so she just straight up murders one of them. I think God just told her to do it. And who are we to debate with freedom fighters on God's mission? After you capture the city, the chapter ends. And immediately continues in mission 6. Siege of no idea what that is and I don't know how to pronounce that word. Mr. Squarehead joins the fight and you now have to clean up the rest of the map. Not a lot happens here, so notable moments are. This guy joining the war literally for one battle and abandoning it forever. Discount Reinhardt joining the battle and running away after one battle never to be seen again. I am certain those two are related. And another general is killed by you. From now on, anyone you encounter in the next missions will die forever. Besides that, it's a mission for hacking and slashing. Storywise, nothing new. In mission 7, aptly named Impasse, you encounter mercenaries who were working all this time with the English to extort gold from the region. 
as it's always the case with mercenaries, threatening territorial integrity of the country, the only answer is violence. You resolve this impasse by beating every single mercenary to the brink of death and giving them 100 coins to switch sides. Unit successfully bribed. It works perfectly. They even open the gates to the castle for you. English, desperate for any way of stopping the unstoppable force of John, deploy the deadliest general they have. Edward. He is immediately killed by your hand and you steamroll to the last mission. Mission 8, the road to coronation, is all about getting the king to his coronation. But since everyone in the region know he didn't do anything during the entirety of the campaign, you need him to stick around so he can steal enough valor to win the popular vote. English are supposed to be retreating, so this should be a walk in the park. But the king is here, and kings are well known for their internal wisdom and strategic prowess. So what's the first thing your future king does? He gets to the town manned by the English troops, they tell him, Yo, just trust us, no funny business here, eh? And this big brain walks right into the city. It's a trap! So you save this buffoon, wipe out the rest of the English in the region and get him to coronation. He thanks you, awards you his ring and goes on to be crowned as the king of what seems to be a bunch of old people. You are treated to the nice little slideshow wrapping up the story and telling you that Joan left to live happily for the rest of her life at the farm. Just like your old dog did when you were a kid. Developers had a plan to do the Siege of Paris, but it was cut. So in this canon, French army just stopped at Reims and Paris is now known for its authentic cuisine of beans on a toast. That's it. I abridged a lot of in-game lore and skipped all of the side quests you can do, but honestly, you will do the same thing. This is a game about one thing and one thing only, killing English soldiers. So if you are a member of IRA or from Scotland, I highly recommend this game to you specifically. Hi everyone who skipped story spoilers. Welcome back, now let's talk about how the game runs on Steam Deck. But before we begin, I have a question for you, that one guy who actually found this video while looking for Wars and Warriors Joan of Arc Steam Deck on YouTube. What's wrong with you? Why do you want to play obscure, unknown game from 2004 on Steam Deck? What sort of insanity has befallen you that compels you to try running every single game on Steam Deck? Are you stupid? Honestly, anyone who owns a Steam Deck is just an oversized baby. That's too stupid to realize that there are better things in life to waste money on than consoles. Anyone owning Steam Deck should be forced into vasectomy to save future generations from their idiosity. And it's actually working! Right out of the box, no need to tinker with it at all. The only thing you have to do is choose the only existing community-made control scheme and boot it up. Only problem I encountered is flickering on the startup movies. But besides that, it's running smoothly. Battery time is near infinite, or around 4 hours in human time, and you can clearly see and read everything. Only thing I'm not sure about is RTS part of the game, because I didn't make it that far, so I assume it doesn't work or requires an entirely different control scheme to play. And with all that covered, do I recommend playing the game? Even all of my nostalgia aside, I would say yes. This is such a rare beast that I never found anything close to what this game achieves. And it's priced at $7 with regular discounts up to 50%, so it's a steal if you ask me. I give this game 7 french fries out of 10 public restrooms. And if you watch this video all the way up to the end, consider subscribing, because you clearly liked my video and I clearly liked you, in a 100% non-homosexual way. That's it for the video, bye! Last video was too fast for me, I felt lost, can you please talk slower? Sorry old man, I will cut my speed consumption twofold, so your boomer brain has time to react. Why is the quality of some clips so bad? Because I'm an idiot and I recorded half of the footage at 6000 bitrate. I am sorry, it will happen again. As a libertarian, I am very offended by the jokes in the last video. Oh god, I am deeply sorry for that. Here is your economy participation trophy to cheer you up. Please don't leave, I need brainlets like you to boost my channel. Why do you pronounce TH like that? Like what? There is nothing wrong with how I pronounce my zits. You tripping balls, man. Do you have a release schedule? I'm only starting out and the last video took me 5 months to make. It was the first one I ever did, so it's logical it took me so long. This one took around 2 months to make. But the game is 20 hours long, which is way shorter than I spent playing War Tales. From now on I will try to aim for at least one video every 3 months. In internet years it's synonymous to being pronounced dead if your channel name is not Ahoy or H Bomber Guy, so just assume I will never return, it will be easier for both of us. Why is your list of channel supporters is just a long lorem ipsum? I don't have anyone supporting me financially, but I wanted to practice fancy outros big boys do, so I figured I would just lie here. Respect to you, my only viewer, who actually watches videos instead of listening to them. 
I am the Chronicler. I shall record your adventures in my book of legends. Tell me of your deeds. 